of my favorites, Jennifer Williams from St. Louis Closet Company, is uh, back with us once a month. Good morning, Jennifer Williams. Good morning, McGraw. Small business guru. That's uh, why you're here. We figured we'd tap into you and use you as a uh, resource. Let's get right to it. Um, last week you talked about, or last time you talked about, uh, the idea of wanting to start a business and, and uh, turning your hobby in, into a business, the good and the bad. Um Let's start this week with um, creating a brand. What exactly does that mean when you're starting a small business, creating a brand? Well, creating a brand, a lot of small business owners think of that topic and they think, oh, I'm going to design a really good logo. And they think they've got it covered. But a brand is so much more than that. A brand is everything that your customer comes in contact when they deal with your company. It's how you answer your phone. It's how your employees look when they show up at the customer's house, how your installation vehicles look, where you're located, what your signage looks like, what music you play in your showroom. A brand is every single thing that a customer touches. So for my business, we sell organization. And it has been really important to me at all times that not only do we do a good job selling organization to our customers, But when our customers come to us, everything in the process is very organized. So our showroom is organized. Our logo is the same color no matter where it is, whether it's on my installer's T-shirts, my installation vehicles, the signage on our building, and our business cards are stationary. And you'll understand what I mean. You'll start looking at businesses differently when you go in and they have a logo on the side of the building that looks one way. You'll get a business card, it looks a totally different way. You'll get a postcard in the mail and it's totally a third different way. Right. Creating a brand also starts to create customer loyalty as well as creating customer awareness. You wanna look and feel the same to your customers in every possible way, in the media, in your ads, with your building, and really with your product and your service. It's a great point because why would you want to go to a uh, person uh, uh, who wants to clean your house, a maid service, and you will look in their car and it's messy? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I know you well enough to know that, uh, and I've seen your trucks, your trucks are clean every single day when they're put away. Every, mm-hmm. every tool has a place and everything's perfect when you get up the next morning. Well, exactly. If my installers show up at a customer's house and their tools are unorganized, their vans are unorganized, or the same thing with my salespeople. If they show up to the house unorganized, our customers are going to look at us and say, how can you sell me custom closets if you're not organized? So creating a brand is an overall big picture thing. It does include your logo and how you represent yourself in advertising and media, but it's really the experience customers have with your business. Uh, I've, re- Believe it or not, in 2013, I've run into companies and I've said, what's your website? And they say, we don't have a website. I mean, isn't that just criminal? That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I was actually looking for a restaurant the other day, and they didn't have a website. And I think Catherine Neville says all the time, if you're a restaurant in today's world, have a website. And once again, your website is just another way that you can show your brand and tie it all together. Social media, same thing. You should be using similar images, similar logos, your logo should be the same, same colors, same, you know, your stationery should be the same color as your logo on your business card. Right. And I, I can't tell you how important that is. And it's subtle differences, but you'll start to notice businesses that have a good brand and ones that don't. It's a great point. You also, a couple of the helpful hints, um, make it so make it a simple logo, right? The s- simpler, the better. The easier it is to see, the easier it is to see. Well, absolutely. Um, like anything, you're, you're going to have, you know, a couple seconds in front of somebody's face. You're right. going to get their attention for such a short period of time. So you want the logo to be readable. There's nothing worse than a business that has a logo that's so scripty and so fancy and it's got some flowers and designs. And you're like, what does this say? I don't even know what it says. <laughs> so having a legible logo Um, one with good colors. We went with your basic red and black so that you could see the logo as it's driving down the road on a van. All right, that's uh, brand uh, awareness. All right, this another one is kind of interesting. Uh, Defining your target customer. Well, absolutely. So many, especially new businesses, 
they think I have a product or a service and I'm going to sell it to everyone. So everyone's my customer. Well, if you make that mistake, you spend a lot of time and a lot of money advertising to people who may never buy your product. When you start out a small business, you have to define who is going to buy your product or service. Is it going to be women? You can't just say all women are going to buy my product. You have to really target in and say women between the ages of 35 and 60, women who own homes, women who make over you know, 60000 per year, women that are college educated, people that live in the St. Louis metropolitan area, and really fine tune who your customer is so that when you start advertising, you can advertise directly to your target customer. This becomes really important in my business. We sell to homeowners. We sell to women. I am not going to spend advertising dollars on teen magazines and (laughs) sporting shows because I know that those are not my customers. And it also allows small businesses to really sort of define, develop, and add new products and services. Now, there's nothing that says you can't expand your target customer, but I think that it's important, especially when business is open, to figure out who their customer is and really go after that person. It's such a fascinating conversation, especially being in the advertising business ourselves here. Um, how many times you talk to some ad agency or something and you're, they're selling a home Im- improvement product or something, and he's like, well, who's your target audience? 25 to 54. I'm like, how many 25-year-olds are actually paying to fix their basement? Right? 25-year-olds don't have basements. They don't have homes. Why are you targeting those people? Good luck with that. Um, it's Knowing your target audience is probably the number one most important thing in a business. Well, it's very, very important, once again, when you go to spend advertising dollars. Right. And so many small businesses really – mess up when they start advertising because there's so many options. In today's world, you can advertise anywhere, as often as you want, online. What about not just target um, makeup, but target area, right? I mean, if you're opening up a Chinese restaurant in, you know, South City, you're not going to be targeting people in Chesterfield. Absolutely. And when I opened my business, I took the sort of, you know, dartboard approach. You start targeting and focusing to people that are closest to you because we actually go to the home, not only to sell the product, but to install the product. So we wanted that drive distance to be as short and as quick as possible. Therefore, we could service the customers better. Then as your business grows, you can broaden that target. But absolutely, we are not going to advertise and sell custom closets in Kansas City, Missouri. Right. That doesn't make sense for us. Did you, when you, and we're kind of short on time here, did you go and look at all the the demographics and numbers, or did you just sort of know this intrinsically? No, when I wrote my business plan, I really studied the market in, in different markets to see who was the customer, who was buying custom closets. And once again, that goes back to the business plan we talked about last month. Right. You've got to know who your customer is. Right. And even though you're putting those numbers down and it's a guess, it's an educated guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What, uh, what's coming up next week? Um, next month, I thought we should talk about, you know, why St. Louis is such an amazing place to start a small business. We have unbelievable universities that are focusing on entrepreneurship. We have, you know, maybe we should call up Governor Perry. <laughs> and have him listen well, in. Well, St. Louis, St. Louis County has a giant incubator thing, and I was Saturday night. I was just at the Arch Grants where they're giving fifty thousand dollars to companies to move to St. Louis, and the and no equity in the company you have to give up. The only thing you have to do is move to St. St. Louis, and they'll help you with resources to get your business up and going. Right, St. Louis is an incredible place to start a small business. That's Jennifer Williams. Uh, how's the closet company? Closet company is doing great. Um, we just started our fall home show special, which is 15% off all custom closets. That's good through November 15th. And as you know, we're yeah. running the McGraw Murphy bed special. 20% it's off. 20% off. And that goes through the end of the year. How so. about that? You, can't, you cannot lose by calling St. Louis Closet Company. Uh, the phone number is 314-781-9000. Or stlouiscloisetco.com. Go and check out their logo. Uh, tell the family I said hi. 9 o'clock, K2.